Uh, hello, everyone. So thank you for, for coming over to see my presentation. So I'm going to start asking you a, a very simple question. Um, have you ever seen a technology which is able to reduce fuel consumption on airplanes, make plants grow three times faster, um, uh, make uh, data centers more sustainable, or even decrease uh, uh, air resistance from trucks? That technology is that simple like this, okay? This is a plasma actuator, and welcome to the plasma cooling era. What is a plasma actuator, and why we are so committed with this technology? Um, most of the most interesting thing that enticed me when I saw, when I saw this technology was its simplicity, okay? This is just a simple strip where you got two electrodes and an electric material and it's able to generate plasma, okay? So it's a technology that has no moving parts, no noise, no vibrations, and it's able to keep the temperature of a body at, 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 your, at your desire. So you can cool and heat whatever surface, okay? So considering that thermal management is being really a challenge in many industries, especially in the semiconductor industry, we thought that this tech can revolutionize, can disrupt many industries, including the data center one. What is a plasma actuator? As I said, uh, as you see here in this graph, is two electrodes. In this case that you see here is two bands of copper separated by a electric material, in this case is captain, okay, that when a high voltage uh, signal is applied on the electrodes, is able to ionize the air over, over the actuator, okay? So this plasma, these charged particles that we produce with the electric field we generate with the actuator, produce a net bulk airflow known as ionic wing. This is something known for ages, but because different technical challenges one of them is the shape of the actuator, and uh, never was bring to the real life. And the first time we are introducing this tech with Intel and Lenovo in workstations and laptops. Well, that's a, some technical stuff. Uh, my CTO wrote these equations here, but he's stuck in Spain because of the blackout. So, but basically uh, these are the equations that uh, basically replicate the electric field force and the volumetric force that the actuator can make. So to make it simple, this can produce up to 10 meters per second ionic wing, almost 40 kilometers per hour of ionic wing, and it's a very flat flow of air that goes through all the surface where this is installed. So you have here a simulation uh, without any incoming flow, just with a static air, and you see all this red area here in this graph that shows all the uh, velocity of the air that we generate with this actuator at four uh, kilovolts, okay? Um, so what are the outcomes of this technology? The outcomes is that's ultra thin, is silent, is cheap, can be very easy scalable, and can be integrated everywhere or almost everywhere. That's why at the beginning of my presentation I refer to airplanes, plants, and many other stuff. So moving forward to a real application of our interest, here you got an experimental setup where we are replicating the heat source of a chip uh, with a high power LED, and uh, we're using a, a, a heat pipe and a head sink and you see this yellow stuff, which is this actuator here. And we got an anemometer to measure um, the velocity of the flow, but also we are measuring the drop on temperature, okay? So, so in this test setup, we are able to reduce the temperature from 80 degrees to 40 degrees in less than a minute, okay? Just with this simple device, which is consuming less than one watt 
uh, for the whole, the whole system, the, the actuator and the high, high voltage uh, converter. Here you got a comparative study uh, with a regular fan. Uh, um, as you see, the actuator can produce cooling even in non-working areas of a fan. So in very low power, uh, in this yellow area, you see that uh, a fan is not working, but an actuator can work and reduce temperature in, in, in that scenario. And, we, and the temperature drops more drastically than a fan. And the consumption is sometimes even three or four times less uh, uh, than a fan with no noise, so under 12 dBAs uh, of noise, and of course, much lighter uh, device. Here you got some comparisons of different actuators we've been using. Um, so actuators can be put also one above another, so to create different kind of layers of actuators, improving the performance of ionic wing over, over the heatsink. You usually operate towards the, the heatsink. And here you see some examples uh, where we go from 83 degrees to 60 degrees, 63 degrees, um, very quickly um, uh, with uh, uh, very low consumption. So in, as you see here, even 0.3 watts of consumption. So um, the key results that we obtained on this project, so the company is just one year old, we started this collaboration with Intel and Lenovo six months ago, is that we can match uh, 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 much better performance than fans in low, or in heat loads between 10 and 30 watts. But we started making experiments on 100 watts heat sources that make us very optimistic in a, in a much higher computing applications. As you see, the, the consumption, of course, in this example is below even 0.055 watts, but we think that uh, around one watt, this is something that can work perfectly. Our zone generation is very low because of the design of this patented uh, actuator. Our zone is always below uh, the standards for, for, for humans. And we also develop, in the case of laptop, very small high voltage converters that can provide up to eight, 18 uh, kilovolts. Applications and new cases, apart from the airplanes, the plants, and the trailers, and all that, uh, we started with consumer electronics, and we want to shift to um, servers and data centers. But also, we are working with uh, Signify, the Philips Lining division, uh, for, co for, for cooling high power LEDs. And also, this also can be helpful on HVAC systems. So also in the data center um, uh, sector, we can uh, introduce this in the fans of the, of the heat exchangers in order to improve the efficiency of, of those devices as well. So to finalize and leave some time for questions, I will also, so actuators also can help to blow the candles in your birthday party. Thank you very much. <laughs> questions. Thanks, David. Yeah, some time for questions. Yeah. Okay, we've got one here, yeah. Yeah, great, thank you. Uh, my question is, I, I joined the later, actually, to summit. So, what kind of a gas you use for the plasma? Do you use any gas or? Whatever air, whatever air. So, so you it just can, can work with whatever air, with normal air can work, you know, but you need gas, yeah. And then power consumption is? Power consumption, including the actuator and the high voltage converter, uh, for a laptop application, for example, is less than a watt, so 800. So 800 milliwatts or something like that. Perfect. Yeah. Is there any radiation from that? Any what? Radiation. Radiation. Like, yeah. So in terms of uh, electro uh, uh, EMI, uh, as far as of the testing we've done so far, there's no such problem. So the plasma stays over the actuator, OK? So it's the effect that produced on the surrounding air on the boundary layer that creates this ionic wing effect, OK? But the plasma stays over, over the uh, the actuator, so this, as far as we, all the tests we've done so far, there's no any other radiation. 
So you use the power source from like server or laptop? Exactly. So you provide, so the converter, for example, we produce for laptops, we get the power at 12 volts, and we, we can produce something between 8 and 18 kilovolts, uh, very low current. The current is in terms of milliampere, so you can touch and nothing happens to you. All right, thank you. Hi, um, how large can you make these? How scalable is this? How large? How large, how scalable? Whatever you want. So you can, of course, as much larger is the actuator, even if you make different layers, much more ionic wind flow you can generate, okay? But it can be very small as well. So in terms of a laptop, where the static pressure is very uh, high, you know, because there's no flow of air inside the laptop, there's some holes, it's able to produce ionic wing uh, inside a laptop, and it can be very, very small to, to remove 10, 15 watts. Of course, if you go much more um, heat removal uh, demand, uh, you will need different layers or much more actuators around. Of course, there's a physical limit. There's never going to be much better than liquid or immersive coolant, okay? But we think there's an intermediate applications from zero bats to 100 or 100 something bats of heat removal, that this can be very helpful and, and avoid much more expensive solutions. Thank you. Another question here, thanks. In terms of the ionic wind, have you done any testing on what kind of static pressure you can overcome with that? Sorry, what's the question, sir? In terms of the ionic wind, have you done any testing on what static pressure you can overcome? Yeah, of course. So, 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 uh, uh, um, of course, depend on the application. So, uh, in 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 an alto, the, the static pressure is high. So, uh, uh, so um, we've been doing designs in different configurations uh, to see to see if it can work, and uh, and we got data. In fact, I can share it if you want. If we have time. But we, we develop different graph and uh, comparing static pressure and flow, and we match all the requirements for laptops so far. We think it's the most demanding application for an actuator because you need to miniaturize everything here. So in something like a server, uh, those requirements are much easier because it's a much more open device. And also the size of the high power, uh, high voltage converter can be bigger, you know, not necessary to reduce it that so it's small. Thank you. Left yourself a lot of time for questions. Uh, yeah. Two minutes. More here. Two minutes. We got two minutes. Uh, yes. Yeah, seeing it's just a sandwich of foils, it probably could be easily shaped, right? Sorry, say again. It could be easily shaped to uh, any shape. I exactly. Need because my heating usually has some kind of ribs to increase the surface. Exactly. So if I put it on like the beginning of the airflow to this shape. It could still work, right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm, interesting. Yeah. It's a great solution, yeah. So um, what about um, longevity compared to fans? <laughs> yeah, I mean, have no mechanical parts. Of course, we never tested this for many years. We have started building at Twitter seven years ago. My co-founders, my, co my technical co-founders are researchers in the Spanish NASA, smaller NASA. And, and they've been building at Twitter for seven years, and they're still working. Of course, we never made it work in a real environment for many years, but that's have no, you know, mobile parts, and it's so, very so that cheap. the material doesn't degrade then? Uh, Sorry? The material doesn't degrade. Yeah. No, doesn't degrade. So, uh, and you can uh, use different type of materials. So we are working with corporations like uh, DuPont in order to yeah. test different materials. So uh, um, it's too good to be true, but we're trying to make it happen. Okay. Okay. Great. I think in the interest of time, I mean, there might be a, you're around, so people want to ask you questions. Okay, so great. Please, please do a round of applause again for our speaker. Thank you, everybody.